Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm so excited to have you guys back and listening today. We're delving into a little bit more of the business in the, in the next po- couple podcasts. Um, you heard last week's with uh, Aaron Young and, and him talking about uh, a little bit about the business world and what to do. Today we have on a really great guest who will talk a little bit more about things like that. Um, But before we get started, I want to invite you all to go over and take the Promote Profit Publish quiz. You can find that at www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. Run over there and find out where your platform skills really are in connection to what success looks like when you're really doing this right. I know we all read books that are, you know, two, three years old. This is a constantly evolving industry. And I invite you to go over and take that quiz and see where your, where your skills are in connection to where you need to be today, not three years ago or the paradigm of three years ago. So today's guest is a client and actually a friend. She has been just um, one of those people in my life who's like, who has so much knowledge and knows so much about what's going on in the world. Her name is Lauren Cohen. And Lauren is a graduate of York University and Osgood Hall, that sounds so snooty, Law School <laughs> in Toronto, Canada. And she's a global entrepreneur and a number one best-selling author. Um, she's also a licensed attorney in both the US and Canada. So she has a lot of information to keep you out of legal trouble. She's an expert concierge in immigration and a business advisor boasting a stellar track record of success. Lauren has firsthand knowledge of the visa process and has herself immigrated from Canada and has become a U.S. citizen. That's kind of a controversial thing these days, you know. Um, In 2008, Lauren started eCouncil Inc., which is an internationally acclaimed company focused on providing strategic full-service solutions for businesses seeking capital and foreigners seeking access to the U.S. market with a special focus on business visas, professional business plans, and the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Program, as well as a lot of other immigrant investment matters. So what we're going to talk about today is her uh, organization called Scale Up Enterprises LLC, which was established in 2018. She has the Scale Up Check Up trademark, and it's her newest initiative for online growth. And uh, we're going to talk about that today. So welcome, Lauren. Hi, Juliet. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So um, tell us a little bit about what Scale Up Checkup is and, and why you started this, why you think it's so important. Sure, thank you. So, um, you know, being a global, helping companies come in from globally into the U.S. and figuring out how to strategize and help them get structured and working with companies, raising capital um, all over the country and for that matter, globally. I kept seeing this pervasive need among entrepreneurs and business owners, as we've talked about, and Aaron Young is is a big proponent of this, which is why we are collaborating as well, um, that these business owners, even the ones that are coming in and getting visas or the one, you know, domestic business owners, they're paying a lot of money, attention and time for coaching and sales and marketing and all this kind of fun, exciting stuff to drive revenues. But they're going to get stopped in the process if they don't build a strong foundation. And I would say, according to statistics, like four to five businesses fail, especially startups. And part of the reason for that is that they don't build a strong foundation. So it's like building your dream home on a sinkhole and then suddenly the whole home collapses. So I saw this need. You know, I'm in a coaching program, spending tons of money with other colleagues that don't even have corporate entities in place. They don't have any agreements. And even if they have a corporate entity in place, which I work with Aaron and Laughlin to set up in various states, even if they have that corporate entity, that's it. They think, oh, I set up my corporate entity, I'm done. And they're not done. And there's seven areas that I cover that if overlooked could lead to disaster in a business. And so that's why I created Scale Up Checkup. It's an online assessment tool that looks under the hood of a business in these seven areas. And we have a three-step process that analyzes the business, assesses their gaps, and provides a diagnosis and service service providers and service experts to be able to satisfy and fill 
the, the needs that we identify. That is so awesome. And I'm going to brag a little because it's tax day that we're actually doing this interview. Um, I have set up my processes and here I was like, cross my fingers, hope to die, stick a thousand needles in my eye. I'm going to owe taxes. And my accountant yesterday called me and guess what? I don't. And it's because those things were set up in advance the way they were supposed to be to take advantage of things that Lauren teaches. So yes. this is really, really important. Well, I think you already covered why this is so in, uh, essential for coaches, authors, and speakers, sort of, but not really. So why it, is this more? I was like thinking, wait a minute, you could get more into this. Why is this so important for them legally and the, the business planning, which I just mentioned, you know, saved me not having to give all my money to um, Uncle Sam? Sure. So um, just FYI, the core of my immigration business was writing business plans and helping businesses get structured. And business plans, I've been writing them for, I don't know, a long, long, long time, about 15 years, for all types of different reasons, from raising capital to getting in the country to expanding your business to building a franchise. And I even have a franchise quiz. So, But then what I keep seeing, especially on Facebook and a lot of the online platforms, and I'm the legal expert, I guess, in, in various groups, for example, and I keep seeing, and even on our calls, Juliet, with some of our colleagues, you keep hearing about these coaches, authors, experts, and service providers, consultants that are giving their clients all this guidance, but they don't have their own, their own house in order. Mm -hmm. And, and the challenge also is, is that they have, they're only as good as their last client, which is true of lawyers and accountants as well. So I am now building a coaching Kickstarter. I've actually built it and we're about to start developing it online. And the coaching Kickstarter not only covers your agreements and making sure that your structure is set up properly because you're exposing yourself, you're guiding businesses, you're right for a lawsuit, you know, as soon as you open your mouth, no matter what type of service, uh, no matter what type of guidance you're giving and you're not protected. And so you're exposing your family, your home, everything to a potential lawsuit. And we know that America is litigious beyond that. These coaches, authors, speakers, experts, pretty much, I would say at least 75%, including you, have amazing courses that you've developed. You know, protocols, courses, programs, systems, deliverables, and those courses need to be copyrighted and licensed and packaged in order so that you can sell them over and over and over, because if not, you're selling something and as soon as you sell it, it's only as good as you are and the person or, or the person that buys it. And if there's no protection in there, you're again, exposing yourself and all of your materials to be copied. And if you haven't done it, done anything to protect them, then why not? So I have seen ongoing, especially among coaches that are just kind of, I'm a coach, I'm a coach, I'm a coach. And I'm not saying this is your audience necessarily, but there are some within our audience that are. I'm a coach of this, I'm a coach of that, because you know they're especially energy healers. And it's amazing that you have this skill and that you're intuitive and all of this, but you still have to protect yourself, even though it's not fun. So why not protect yourself and create residual income and of course program that's covered and safe and protected? Because you're spending all this money on building your course materials, but if you don't protect them, you're only, you know, you're, you're just kind of out there and it doesn't make sense. So that's why I, that's why it's so important for the, the groups that you are particularly um, working with that need this kind of coverage and analysis to look under the hood and say, okay, am I safe? And what do I have that could be a potential huge opportunity? Like licensing is a big opportunity to make money. And people are overlooking it because if they don't create a licensing program, a licensing agreement, they're not really able to sell much other than their course. So there's trademarks and there's copyrights and there's licensing and there's all of these different components that coordinate to make a full scope of services that you can sell and have many Juliets selling your stuff all over the country, which is exactly how you want it. It's kind of taking the affiliate program and putting it on steroids. It is. And, and I'm just going to mention something because it just happened on the last call I was on. So, um, and it happened to me this weekend when I was at an event 
is um, you think that you have this stuff in your head and you think that, oh, I can't copyright it or I can't set up a holding company for my intellectual property because that really is what it is because really everybody knows this. And the truth is you need to have all that because everybody doesn't know doesn't. it. Right. So that's what I really, and, and the call right before you, we were talking about my, my client is a gut health specialist. She's actually a medical professional, which you and I both know many of the people out there in the coaching world um, may or may not actually have the qualifications to be teaching what they're teaching. Um, but that's exactly what she said to me when I brought up the copywriting conversation was, um, but doesn't everybody know this? No, everybody does not know this. And you want to keep those people who may not be qualified in the coaching sphere, the way a registered nurse is from stealing your IP. So can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. And I'm even going to augment it one step further. Who cares if everybody knows it? Okay. So let's go back to McDonald's for a second. Okay. Um, we're not going there, Juliet. Don't worry. Thank God, because you know okay. I don't eat fast food. Well, I do like the coffee, I've got to admit, <laughs> once in a while, okay? But, yeah. But McDonald's. So McDonald's actually wasn't the first franchise. Uh, Singer, Singer Sewing Machines was. I actually wrote a book about striking the perfect match between foreign investors and franchises. I work with tons of franchises. It's a really great area. Okay. So McDonald's was the first franchise that everybody knows of right? The first hugely successful franchise. And then Burger King came along and, and McDonald's was all worried because, oh my God, we created this and this and this and this, and now Burger King is here and what are they going to do? But, but instead it just actually augmented McDonald's um, success because now there's competition. So they may have had a formula and, and Burger King may have copied the formula to some degree, but the beauty is that Burger King created its own brand separate and apart from McDonald's. Now, why am I using this as an example? Look, a lot of people know how to do quizzes, right? Know how to create quizzes. You've created a system built around the quizzes to help drive traffic to the business owner that's creating the quiz, which is why you have a following. That system that you've created is your intellectual property. No matter how many people are providing a similar system, it's not identical. And if you don't copyright that, th that material, then all of the people that are using it could potentially share it with anybody they want, okay? But copywriting, it's not, uh, it's not hard, it's not that expensive, and you need to copyright individual modules, okay? So what that means is, I'm working with a client now. She has a whole package that she wants, that she's selling as a package, but she's also selling individual modules. So we need to get a copyright for each of the modules because otherwise they're not protected if they're sold individually. So don't think just because you're coaching, you're, you're coaching on some, like, you know, business coaching on how to grow your business or you're teaching how to market or whatever it is. Don't think that just because you're similar to the nine other people that are in your immediate group, that you don't have something that is copyrightable and protected and can be protected. And if you don't protect it, I mean, it's like anything, like in Jerry Maguire, help me help you. If you don't protect it, why is somebody going to respect it? You haven't taken action. Why would, you know, you and I are definitely go-getters, Juliet, but there's a lot of people that just kind of are like, well, nobody's going to steal it, which is exactly what prompted me to do this in the first place. Or, People that don't have insurance. Oh, well, nobody's going to sue me. I don't need insurance. Or they don't have a company. Or I have one client now that's been in business 25 years. They don't have an agreement, a shareholder's agreement, and there's two shareholders. And now they're having a dispute. There's no agreement. Don't, don't doubt. Don't think that any question is stupid. Ask the question, right? Ask the question of your coach. And then your coach can ask the question of somebody like myself who has the, the kind of legal and operational background to provide the guidance. And whatever you do, please don't just take something on online and copy and paste it or download it uh, or you know just use some random internet resource to get it done. Work with somebody that you trust, a single person that you can trust to have your back. And that's what's super important. Like coaches need coaches. My coach has a coach, your coach has a coach, right? Yes. 
you have a coach, I have a coach. So it's, it's cyclical. And at some point, those coaches need guidance as well. Not everybody wants to deal with this not so fun and sexy stuff. But the truth is that if you create a licensing program that you can sell and resell and package and repackage and repurpose in various ways, there's beauty in that. And suddenly the not so sexy broccoli, as I call it, as you know, becomes very sexy, potentially very lucrative ice cream. And that's what this is all about. Transitioning that negative stuff attached to the foundation into the fun stuff attached to numbers and adding zeros to your balance sheet and your and the value of your business and your revenues. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute. This kind of went off the rails a little bit to where I was going, but I want to give you some scenarios because I know what your answers are going to be already. I would have made a great attorney. Um, okay. I only ask yes. questions I know the answers to. Um, a lot of people out in the book world have been led to believe that if they mail their manuscript to them, it is copyrighted. True or false? Okay. So everything that you write is copyrighted, but it's common law copyright. Now, it's a little confusing and you have to go to law school to understand this. And even those who go to law school don't necessarily understand. So as soon as you write an email to me, there's a copyright, an inherent copyright in anything that comes out of your brain and goes onto paper. Okay, that's copyrighted. But that is a, that level of protection will not hold up in court generally. Great, that's the answer I was looking for. Okay, so what you had, what the level of protection that's needed is that one step further, kind of like when your trademark is pending, you can put TM, but until your trademark is approved, you don't formally have a trademark, but you're allowed to use trademark pending. Same for copyright. If, but if you don't actually take the physical action and of filing that with the, um, the copyright, there's, there's state copyright and federal copyright. If you don't take that action, then all you have is that common law level of protection, which generally, as I say, does not hold up in court. So you want to take that additional step to protect your work or your work's not protected. Okay, I'm going to take this a step further. The other myth I see out there all the time. If I put copyright 2019 Winsome Media Group at the bottom of my action guide, it's copyrighted. Same. It's exactly the same, same thing. Okay. So just like on our quizzes, we put copyright at the bottom and they are copyrighted, but each quiz probably could be, should be copyrighted with the, with the copyright department and it should be filed because again, really it's subject only to, it's only as good as the opportunity that it presents within itself. So what that means is, unless if somebody's not challenging you or trying to steal it, you're good. But as soon as somebody tries to steal it or challenge you, I'm sorry, this phone decided to ring all of a sudden. And it's always spam, so I apologize. But the, <laughs> always. Um, but the, you, you need to, again, take that extra level. So the C with the circle is really, again, it's the same C with the circle that you're gonna get once you file. But this, but once you file, you have that designation. That is good. Now that wasn't something we planned on talking about, but it was a great mm -hmm. door opener to that because there are so many myths in the book world about how this is really, really done. Okay, so um, let's say that I don't go out and set up my business as an S corp or a C corp or an LLC or whatever it is out there. And I keep it a sole proprietorship and I don't do any of this the right way. And somebody doesn't like what I do. What happens then when they sue me? Like, can you give us the bleakest, darkest picture? Because that's do you like the home that you're living in. I, I love it because I don't own it, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if I did, well, yeah. Okay, I know so it. that's not a great example then. But um, so when you don't have, no matter what entity you have other than a sole proprietorship, that entity is a separate and distinct entity for legal purposes from you as a person. Now, there's certain steps you have to take, certain levels of protection that are afforded. You can't commit fraud because they'll, they'll do what's called piercing the corporate veil. But as soon as you set up that entity, that's a separate and distinct entity from you, that creates a level of protection for you as a person and you as a, like, let's say a parent or a family or whatever it is, okay? But if you don't have that, 
they're, they have nobody, they're, they're going to go after you personally for whatever it is that you've done wrong. And you're personally liable for everything. So why not add that level of protection? So silly not to. But as I say, just setting up the company isn't enough. We have to make sure that you keep your corporate records up to date and that you do the annual filings and that you create the right legal and other agreements and that you have the right protections in place. <clears throat> so you can't just set it up as a sham just to protect you from personal liability. There actually has to be a real business and you have to be running it as a business, not a hobby. So the best example I'm going to give you that is if the IRS comes in and looks at your business and they look at you and you haven't done all of those things that Lauren just talked about, they're going to bust you and say, oh, that's nothing more than a paper doll of you. Yes. So you have to do all those things you were just talking about in order to keep it legally a not you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, people are constantly saying to me, especially in California. So I work with a lot of people in California and in California, it's about, there's, there's a couple of different elements involved in keeping your company up to date. One of them is a franchise tax, mm -hmm. which you, it, it's not really for a franchise. It's just called a franchise tax. There's a franchise tax applicable in Delaware as well. Delaware, they don't have annual filing fees. They have a franchise tax requirement. So you have to pay a franchise tax each year, which covers you off to do update your annual, your annual report. In California, the franchise tax is, is in addition to your filing fee. So I've had people say, well, it's not worth the $800 a year to pay to keep my LLC in place. And I'm like, really? So I now have a client that's come to me who didn't do that. And they are a very significant client and they are now being sued. And they are now being sued personally because they didn't bother to file their annual report properly because they just didn't. They didn't think anything would happen. So, and it happens very, especially with smaller companies, but you know, don't take the risk. You're, you're exposing yourself, your family, all of your assets, you know, why bother? We're working so hard to build our businesses. Let's take them seriously. Right. And, and I agree with that 800 thing. I used to incorporate, be incorporated in California and everything's expensive and too highly regu regulated. So I'm not an attorney. I'll preface that, but don't incorporate in California. Um, <laughs> So let's see, what do we have here? What is the key benefit of working with a trusted advisor and how does your system in particular help with that? Thank you. So, um, you know, it's a little different. So I am a lawyer, but that's kind of the means to an end for me. So what that means is that I come into a business and I provide a service as a trusted advisor to help coordinate all of these moving parts for them, almost like an outsourced COO with that legal background. So the beauty of that is that these seven areas, and I'll mention them real quickly, it's business planning, legal and compliance, insurance and licensing, financial and accounting, branding and marketing, mission, vision, exit, and uh, operations and systems. I remembered all of them, yay. yay. So <laughs> those seven areas are super critical to your foundation. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not a branding expert, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do with your branding, but I'm going to tell you that your brand needs work. And then one of my brand ambassadors would come in and provide the services that they, that the client needs. I'm not, I'm going to say you need general liability insurance. I'm not an insurance broker or insurance agent. I'm going to bring in one of my brand ambassadors to provide that service for you, depending on what state you're in. What we what I, and then what I'm going to do is manage those people so that you don't have to, and you can focus on building your business. So I'm going to make sure that what we identify as the gaps are actually being filled in an efficient way based on our implementation schedule and budget. So it, it's super important. It's, it's really like um, an insurance policy that you're bringing in by working with a, a trusted advisor like me to make sure that these seven areas are handled properly and don't go under the radar because as soon as they go under the radar, or you're not paying attention to them. That's when a disaster could strike. So how do we get that, that let's just say metaphorically a look under the hood to make sure that all of that is working together. So we start with a quiz. Can you imagine <laughs> that? I mean, I don't know. It's like shocking, right? 
I, I, I didn't, I didn't know that was going to be your answer. Maybe I wouldn't make such a great answer. There you go. <laughs> so um, I've built many, many quizzes, but the first quiz, which is the one that Juliet custom built for me, is the best quiz to start the process of looking under the hood. And this quiz can be found at scaleupcheckupquiz.online. It's all one word, scaleupcheckupquiz.online. And I will put it in the, um, the notes, right, Juliet? Yeah, in the no, we'll, we'll have it in the show notes. But you had, let's just talk about that for a minute, because I think it, it's really beneficial for uh, lawyers and accountants and people. Like when you came to me, you already had a quiz, right? I had, well, I did, um, sort of. So yeah. I had an assessment. So I built my kind of baby is this assessment that I built. But the assessment takes about seven minutes and people were, were a little hesitant because it's digging a little deeper. So my process is like this, assessment, diagnosis, delivery. In my assessment phase, it's, a, it's my signature system. In my assessment phase, I have about six quizzes right now. The fun one, which I'll share is show me the money quiz, which everybody loves, showmethemoneyquiz.com. So the quizzes are all free. And they're targeted to different, um, different um, target markets, different audiences, okay? Like, for example, the franchise quiz is targeted to a company that's interested in potentially franchising or an existing franchise. So those are free. They then lead into my, my assessment, which is paid. It's a small fee. It's $47. And that assessment is a little bit of a deeper dive. It's less generic than the quiz. And, and it allows me to provide my guidance at a little deeper level. And then we go, we do a, um, a strategy session and that then leads into the diagnosis component of my, of my system, which is where I created the success plan that analyzes the business in these seven areas. And the delivery of it is all of the ambassadors, including myself, that are overseeing and delivering the actual services that are needed to fill the gaps we identify in the success plan. So yes, I had an assessment, but it wasn't working the way that I wanted it to work. So we built quizzes to make it a little more fun and, and sexy. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll I even say too, uh, Lauren's initial assessment is very, very good. It, it answers the question she needs to help, but it's also, it was a little invasive and people have to get to right. know you a little bit first. So right. people are actually taking that step. So I didn't plan on going there either. I just wanted to know about your quiz. So what else can you tell us that's really important about this business planning that, that absolutely they have to do? That, that they're not going to hear from any place else but Lauren Cohen? There is no workaround to building a strong foundation. And if you don't build a strong foundation, you're going to hit a wall. And your zeros that you're adding are going to be zeros on the front and not the back. So what that means is you're going to end up going into the negative because eventually you're going to hit this wall and you're not going to be able to scale. You're not going to be able to sustain any real scaling because you don't have that foundation in place. And it's those seven areas that really need to be looked at and considered. You can't really do one without the other. And just because you have all your legal stuff in place, if you don't have insurance, you're still leaving yourself exposed. So the beauty of working with this, it, it's, it's really the only single stop, one stop resource that looks under that hood. And again, I think that the key here like I said at the beginning, and you know, I obviously really love Jerry Maguire because I named a quiz after their Show Me the Money. I remember but is this <laughs> <laughs> for those of you not watching the loser on the forehead? <laughs> you'll be glad. I remember you'll be glad. But there's so many sayings in there, and one of them is "Help me help you." So what that means is, you know, people are often saying to me, "Well." can you tell me this and this and this? And I said, well, I can only lead a horse to water. I can only guide you. At the end of the day, as the business owner, you have to be the one to take action, right, Juliet? Right. We can only make suggestions and recommendations. And then we take the, the client by the hand, which is what I'm really good at, is holding their hand and patiently, sometimes not so patiently, helping them <laughs> to go through. Because the truth is that I don't sleep at night because I want my clients to sleep at night. And it worries me when they are not looking after 
the very basic foundational elements that are so easy. You know, I see on Facebook all the time people saying, go to this and get those legal documents. Go to this and get the insurance. You know, you can't do that. You can't do piecemeal. You need to really work with somebody who has your back and is there to oversee the process and not just give you little tidbits of information. And that's why, where my, my experience of 15 years of writing business plans and providing these concierge quarterbacking services comes in because I saw how to look under the hood. I learned how to analyze a business. It's kind of like people have said to me, well, you're extremely intuitive. And I'm like, you know, you don't think of lawyers as being intuitive, but I am definitely a, I, See myself as a fortune teller because I can help you to look and see where the fortunes are in your business and where you might not be able to access them because you didn't cover these little simple things that could so easily be in implemented just like with the coaches that's why I've created this coaching Kickstarter and you know it's be it's a beautiful thing let's get you structured and and coordinated so you can make money and use all the quizzes to to help you to build your lead list and get it going and Give them all an opportunity to resell what you're building. So I'm going to kind of reiterate because we have gone off on the last couple podcasts into this business, like the technical building versus the platform building. But I'm hoping that all of you out there can see, as I tell you over and over, platform building is not an instant, instant gratification. Neither is this building the business as well. Having all of these components that she's talking about in place is not an instant gratification thing. All of it takes time to build that foundation and then you can soar and get out there and, and be the influencer and do the things you want to do. Without this and without that platform building, this is part of it, that getting this yeah. up and running right. Lauren, this has been great today. Where can we find you if we want to- Oh, you can find me everywhere. I, and she's not kidding about that. You can find her everywhere. You can find me everywhere. So I, I'm on Facebook. You can find me, Lauren Cohen, or Scale Up Checkup. Um, it's all one word, Scale Up Checkup. I also have Scale Up to Sell as a group on Facebook. It's a great group helping businesses to get ready for ultimately a lucrative exit. On uh, LinkedIn, it's Lauren Cohen, or again, Scale Up Checkup. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me directly, Lauren at ScaleUpCheckup.com, Lauren at scaleupcheckup.com or you can reach us by phone at 866-724-0085 866-724-0085 or you can ask Juliet. <laughs> yes, always. Ah, uh, you have a free gift for us today. Yes, so please do take the one of the quizzes. I'll re reiterate the one that's probably the most fun is show me the money quiz.com. And once you do that, um, you will have access to my seven secrets of scale up success um, as well, which is a free gift if you want to go directly to that as well. It's um, seven secrets. I'm sorry. It's scaleupcheckup.net, scaleupcheckup.net. But I um, would love for you to try the quiz and then we can have a call to see how we might be able to help you to scale your business and uh, see what opportunities are out there for you. Great. Lauren, thank you so much. This is very thank informational. You, Thank you.